Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. Doug back again with some new things to show you. Uh, got a few new subscribers I think since last time, so welcome aboard. Nice to meet you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure and do so. So we'll jump right into it. I had a few um, kind of uh, thrift finds right here. First off was Stevie Wonder for once in my life. I think this is about 1968. That's on Tamla. Very funky on this one. I like, I really love that early uh, or later 60s uh, Stevie Wonder. Uh, the band, it's not uh, not credited. I guess it'd be the Funk Brothers or something, but uh, the band are, are definitely not phoning it in on this one. Funky, nice bass. Very, very nice album, as always, from Stevie. Got to Commodores Live. This is from 1977, Motown, back when they were still funky. Of course, they do have to take time out for the obligatory Lionel Richie ballads. And there's also a Wishbone Ash pilgrimage. This one is actually a dollar find from a record store. It's on Decca. This is, uh, I think... Yeah, only the first one I've got by them on vinyl. Kind of interested to check them out. Heard a lot about the Argus LP, so that's one I'm keeping an eye out for. And some more kind of one and two dollar finds from this uh, local record store. Finally picked this one up, Sly and Robbie, Rhythm Killers. It's from uh, 1987 on Island. It's a little bit later one from them. Getting into kind of a syncopated dance hall style, a bit of a hip hop and R and B mixed in there. Not really pure reggae. Seen this around lots of times. It's, I think it's kind of not really one of their best, but for a dollar or two, I thought it. Buck up and check it out. Also got this one. This one was about a dollar or two, I think. Shinehead Unity. This is from 1988. He is a Jama an American of Jamaican descent. He's in the New York area, I believe. And he mixes kind of hip hop with uh, a lot of reggae and dance hall. Very nice one from him. The title track actually samples or, or kind of reworks the Beatles come together. And I found one 12 inch single from uh, Biddy McLean. You can see that on Virgin. This is from 1994. It Keeps Raining, backed with. Uh, True, 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 Ken Parker tune from uh, Studio One, I believe, and uh, dedicated to the one I love. It's a nice version of the um, Mama Cass tune. Uh, he is a singer. He's been around quite a while. This is 1994, like I said. I, I think he'd already been around for a while before that. He's had quite a few albums. He's got kind of, a, he's not really a household name, but he definitely has uh, pockets all over the world where he's popular. I think he's toured in Japan. I've seen albums by him in Hawaii that I've never heard of or seen before anywhere else. And uh, kind of one of his, uh, he's best known for uh, putting out an album called uh, On Bond Street with the Supersonics. This came out in 2004 and it got quite a lot of, um, a lot of buzz, a lot of positive feedback in the, the reggae world. What he did was uh, he took the original instrumental tracks from Studio, or not Studio One, Treasure Isle label, Rocksteady era, and uh, reworked them and put his his own vocals over top of them. And it just suited him to a T. He's kind of a, a throwback to that um, very professional, very classy, very soulful kind of singer. Thinking like uh, Sam Cooke and uh, like the Jamaican guys like uh, Slim Smith. He's very much in that style. Uh, more recently, he's been doing some work with Sly and Robbie, and still around, still doing uh, doing his thing, putting out new music. Apparently, his live shows are quite something to see. Puts on a great show. And on to some more record store finds. Herbie Mann, Muscle Shoals, Nitty Gritty. Kind of getting into a Herbie Mann groove lately. Kind of mixes up jazz and soul. And uh, you've got uh, Roy Ayers on vibes on this one. And uh, yeah, killer stuff here. 
This is from 1970 on Cotillion self-production and I also got same same store same time I got stone flute it's from the same year which uh, this one is in a bit more of a pure jazz style on it it's arranged by William S. Fisher and uh, yeah Sonny Sherrock on guitar here Roy Ayers again very dope that's the inlay there and also got Bill Withers at the same time. Still Bill. Don't need to say too much about him, I'm sure. See that? That is on Sussex, original, 1972. Of course, it's got uh, Who Is He and What Is He to You? One of his funkiest moments. Lean On Me, everybody knows that one. Very, uh, very nice album. Mix of funk, soul, and his own kind of a kind of singery, songwritery touch. And uh, next up, I went to this thrift store that uh, I've been kind of hitting on and off for a year or two. Um, I used to find uh, kind of the, once in a while, I used to find something a few unusual things there. I'd kind of dropped off it. They moved locations, got rid of all their old stock, and weren't really getting anything in to speak of. So I, I was literally on the verge of dropping that spot altogether. And then I started sort of finding one or two things here and there that kind of kept me coming back. One advantage this has is uh, it's kind of a religious-based uh, thrift store, and they only charge 50 cents for their records as opposed to $2 at, like, a Value Village thing. So if you do find something good, it's definitely a, an advantage. So one day I walked in there, and I could see right away there was kind of more records there than was there the time before. They kind of hadn't been getting much new stock in. So I started looking, and one of the first ones I found was this. Ramsey Lewis, Hang On Ramsey. Young and Holt still in the group here. Uh, Hang On Sloopy, of course, their big hit. This is from mid-60s, I believe. On Cadet. And I quickly could see that there was a... a bunch of similar records that clearly came from the same the same previous owner which I, I always get a rush when you find a collection like that especially when it's good stuff so I found some more stuff Ralph McDonald Sound of a Drum this is from 1976 this is kind of a jazzy funky disco killer stuff there found this one Jimmy McGriff and Groove Holmes come together. This is a uh, white Groove Merchant label. So you know what you're getting here. Funky organ. Bernard Purdy on drums here. Got this one. Roland Prince, Free Spirit. He is from Antigua. He's a good jazz guitar player. Fairly mellow, brings kind of a bit of a Caribbean, bit of a bossa nova flavor in there. Very nice album. That one's from 77 on uh, marble kind of vanguard label there. Very nice. I should say all these are in just primo condition. The, the Hang On Ramsey one may be a, a little bit on the rougher side, but kind of older than the other ones. These are all kind of 70s. And I got this one, Jeff Lorber Fusion, Water Sign. You kind of know what you're getting with this one. It's very weather report style, mix of uh, rock and jazz, funk and soul. Freddie Hubbard on here. Nice one. Uh, Joe Sample was there, Rainbow Seekers, which there's basically uh, two thirds of the Crusaders on here. They're just missing uh, Wilton Felder on bass. Very nice one. And I was showing some Mongo Santa Maria in my last video. Found another one. Sing a simple song. All strung out. Some killer covers of uh, some funky stuff on here. Sing a simple song. Day Tripper by the Beatles. Do Your Thing. I think it was uh, Charles Wright and Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band. I heard it through the grapevine on here. Killer one there. And there was a whole bunch by Hugh Masekela. Which... Uh, First one was this one, Masakela. 
It's from 1968. We're showing him last time too, so I was super stoked to find these. This is on Uni. And this one was actually, uh, this one blew me away. It actually reminded me a lot of uh, Sly and the Family Stone. There's a riot going on. I mean, the first track on here is called Mason Grenades. There's one called Blues for Huey. There's one called uh, Otis, I guess, Tribute to Otis Redding. And the next song on there after that is called Riot, which was actually covered in Jamaica by the Soul Syndicate, recording for producer Keith Hudson. Which <laughs> I practically jumped out of the chair when I, when I heard that one. It's like, I know that one. But killer album, very political, very, uh, very focused, very intense. If you only know him from uh, Grazing in the Grass, you do not know him. Which I, I still haven't got the album with that one on it. And I also found this one, Masakela, Introducing Hedzole Sounds. It's from a few years later, in the early 70s. Killer gatefold on here. Uh, Hedzole Sounds was a band from Ghana. Uh, Masakela had been introduced to them by Fela Kuti, and uh, members of them actually backed him up on stage at uh, Monterey Pop Festival, along with uh, Bill Big Black on Congas. And uh, they, they toured with him. They did this with album and one or two others with them, recorded partially in America and Africa. And just killer Afro jazz, a bit of Afro beat. Wicked stuff. I believe they're also backing him up on this one, I'm Not Afraid. This is about a year later, 1974, which apparently he's not afraid of almost getting his head crushed like a grape there. So this one's on Blue Thumb. Again, very, this one very jazzy, very a uh, bit of an Afro... Uh, actually, that one's been called... Uh, no, the Head Soleil Sounds one has been called uh, the greatest Afro jazz album. And lastly, for... Uh, Hugh Masekela, this one with Herb Alpert. This is a little bit later, 19, late 1970s, I think. This is more of a, just a fun party album. These two are just uh, kicking back and having a ball here. Very nice one. And uh, lastly, in that haul from the thrift store, I got uh, this one, Montage. Hey Good Hardy in the Montage. Hey Good Hardy, kind of an easy listening, cheesy guy. But uh, this was kind of an earlier one. I, I knew he'd played with like Herbie Mann and a couple other people, George Shearing. So I thought I'd give this one a try for 50 cents. It's on the GRT label. And uh, this is uh, not really jazzy too much. It's more in the kind of uh, Sergio Mendez, Brazil 66. They touch on a little bit of that kind of bossa nova flavor. And uh, also the Canadian group, The Bells, which was kind of in a similar kind of easy listening pop kind of vibe. So it's kind of nice for what it is. And uh, last up for today, I was going to save, I got a few uh, small haul of records from my, my buddy that I get some vintage reggae from. I was going to save those for next time and just keep this one short. But uh, we actually just lost uh, Rico Rodriguez very recently, which uh, if, if you haven't heard of him, he was a trombonist. Grew up in Jamaica. Um, at the same time as some of the key members of the Scatolites. He was actually taught the trombone by uh, Don Drummond, founder of the Scatolites. Went to the Alpha Boys School with a lot of those guys where they learned their instruments. Uh, he immigrated to uh, England quite early, in the early 60s, so he kind of missed out on the, the ska explosion that was happening in, uh, in Jamaica. Otherwise, uh, he, he surely would have been right at the forefront of that. But... Uh, yeah, did his thing, put out a bunch of albums, a lot of records, a lot of singles, and then by the late 70s, the two-tone explosion was starting to, to come around, and bands like The Specials brought him in to record on their records. Uh, most famously, probably, uh, A Message to You, Rudy, by The Specials, which was uh, their version of a Dandy Livingstone hit, which I believe he actually played the, the trombone lead on The Specials version and on the original. So I thought I would show you what I've got from him. I actually just picked this up the day he died, out of respect, Jamarico. This is from 1982. This is on two-tone chrysalis. 
I haven't listened to this one yet, so I was going to save that for next video, but I thought better get this out, get the tribute in there. And I thought I'd show you what else I have by him. This is maybe his most famous album. I got this for five bucks at a record fair a few years ago. This is Rico, Man from Warica. You can see the cover and the seams are a bit messed up, but the vinyl is pretty nice. It's on Island. This is from... 1976, I'm thinking. Uh, you got Sly and Robbie on here. Uh, just a cream of the cream of the, the players at the time. La Mamba on here, maybe one of his, his most well-known tunes. Gunga Din, the title track, Man from Warica. And there's also a dub version of it. Which this is a reissue, just came out not that long ago. Warica dub, white label. Original is uh, rarer than hen's teeth. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. I have uh, probably enough already for another video, but I thought I'd keep this one kind of uh, short. My last couple of ones have gotten a little, a little out of hand. So I got a few more things to show you next time. Uh, record fair season is starting very soon, so I'm hoping to have some cool stuff to show you then. And until then, I'll keep checking out you guys' videos. And I hope everybody's doing well. And cheers. Keep it spinning. Peace, guys.